Hello wonderful person, welcome to What The Math. Today we're going to be using a video game to learn about Chernobyl disaster, which occurred almost exactly 30 years ago. My name is Anton and I love using video games to learn and to teach. And this is one of those moments when we're going to learn about a historical event that I think changed the world. Let's start with, well, what am I going to be using for this? I'm using a game called Stalker, which actually has three different installments and it, ca it came uh, came out over or almost uh, 10 years ago. And um, the game that I'm playing is actually a modification, which you can download absolutely for free. Um, it's called Lost Alpha. This is a remake of the original game that uh, pretty much gives you a really good opportunity to explore this desolate world of Pripyat, which was the a little town where uh, the disaster has occurred. This is actually very close to the Chernobyl nuclear plant, which unfortunately 30 years ago exploded, causing a huge uh, and dramatic disaster. And what this game allows you to do is essentially to explore uh, this world, but since it is a game and since it's a little bit of science fiction, um, it's actually not as accurate as you would think it is, obviously. There is, you know, there's things like uh, mutants, there's things like anomalies, there's a lot of um, science fiction stuff going on, uh, but now Nevertheless, I think the atmosphere itself that the game was able to create is absolutely amazing. And if you haven't played this before, it's a really good chance for you to try it because first of all, it's free and it has been optimized to work on modern systems really well. And second of all, it's actually probably one of the better games that came out in the last decade that you absolutely have to try. Uh, anyway, so now let's talk a little bit about Chernobyl disaster. And as I'm basically exploring this desolate world, uh, we'll try to find some things to possibly kill and some things to collect. Now, this is actually an open world RPG with a lot of action and a lot of first person shooting. Um, and it's actually a really fun game, uh, but it is difficult. So I may, may end up dying. Anyway, so the city of Pripyat is um, on the border of Ukraine and Belarus. It's sort of uh, northern Ukraine. And this little city, unfortunately, had a bit of a mismanagement and a bit of a problem with people not really following orders. And due to a human error, the um, nuclear reactor inside the Chernobyl nuclear power plant um, exploded, releasing huge amounts of radiation. And although most of us were probably either really young or still didn't really exist back then, um, it did affect Europe quite dramatically as a matter of in fact, here's a picture of where the uh, nuclear cloud ended up spreading. It was essentially all over Europe. Uh, the uh, leftover nuclear materials were even found as far as Norway, which is uh, several thousand kilometers northwest of that location. So essentially, this affected many different countries and uh, obviously affected the area nearby as well. And even to date, this is still the most uh, dramatic nuclear disaster, even compared to Fukushima uh, in Japan back in 2011, which didn't release as much radiation. As a matter of fact, it was it, um, it released only about 10% of radioactive material compared to Chernobyl. And during the Japanese disaster, there were uh, no fatalities at all. Whereas during Chernobyl disaster, uh, 31 people died as a result of exposure to um, highly radioactive material. But despite these deaths, um, even to date, we're still not entirely sure how exactly um, radio radiation and specifically uh, radioactive fallout um, affected people and animals that actually stayed in that region for some time. And um, even though the government, the, the Soviet government back then, initiated what's called an exclusion zone, which is basically a circular 30 kilometer um, zone that you're not allowed to access because it's essentially radioactive. Um, despite of all of this, uh, some people were still actually exposed to some radiation even before they left Pripyat. And um, unfortunately, um, due to this exposure, some people may have already been in danger. But here's the interesting fact. Um, even to date, uh, we're still actually not entirely certain how this radiation affected people. So um, the people that used to live there had slightly higher chance of developing thyroid cancer. And thyroid is a gland that is located in your neck that actually uses iodine to um, to produce things that your body needs. But um, this nuclear plant also released a radioactive iodine, that which, which your body actually may have absorbed. And as a result of the absorption of this radioactive iodine, uh, this may have increased cancer rates. But the thing is, it's actually not as high as you would think. And as a matter of fact, uh, with certain or with some exceptions, it seems like um, the radiation release was not as devastating as people claimed it would, ha it would have been. As a matter of fact, many scientists claim that this entire area of 30 kilometers 
it would be essentially empty. There would be no trees or a very, very little growth. Uh, there would be no animals that would be able to survive. And today, 30 years later, we are absolutely shocked at what is actually happening in that area. So right after the disaster, about a day after the disaster, um, 44,000 people that used to live in Prepad Township were evacuated and, and this zone of 30 kilometers was um, placed around the accident site. But obviously the animals that used to live in that area were not moved and actually stayed um, inside this area and around the, you know, everywhere essentially, around the reactor, around the lakes and rivers that were there and they were actually polluted as well. And so, other than people, no one actually left. And what's been happening in the last few years um, is that animals have actually exploded in numbers. And we're not talking about mutants, we're not talking about animals that are abnormal in any way, but actual mammals, actual um, forest animals that you would find in normal forests. So there's quite a lot of wild pigs, there's quite a lot of wolves that have been actually filmed and photographed. And at the top of this food chain, there's quite a lot of carnivores uh, that have actually increased in numbers. And uh, one of the reasons we actually want to study these carnivores in more detail is because they actually end up eating prey that have foraged on a radioactive landscape. And so um, animals like wolves and badgers may actually be a really good opportunity for us to study because if we find more radiation inside their body, we might be able to study what happens to, to their bodies when they consume all of that. But just using visual cues and using visual analysis, scientists actually uh, are pretty confident now that they're relatively healthy and nothing seems to be happening to them. Now, this process is actually uh, very common and this is called bioaccumulation. This is essentially when uh, something is absorbed uh, in lower levels of food chain and then as, as it moves to the upper level, specifically here we're talking about badgers and wolves, uh, due to this bioaccumulation, uh, the amount of radioactive materials inside wolf bodies would actually obviously increase. Uh, and so to us, studying these animals would actually be a really good opportunity to find out if it's actually dangerous for them to live in this area. I know the initial studies did say that, you know, uh, there seems to be a decrease in number of birds, there seems to be a decrease in number of certain animals. Um, the cons consequent studies, specifically the more recent studies from the last two years, have actually found that um, there's quite a lot of species that um, have actually thrived in this area, and some species that were almost extinct actually recovered and are in huge numbers now. Specifically, there's actually an animal called Prewalski horse, which actually used to be near extinct, and now there's quite a lot of them running around the area and just enjoying their life without humans. And interestingly, one of the bigger studies um, actually concluded that the vast majority of the population, uh, specifically in these areas like Fukushima and Chernobyl, don't need to live in fear of serious health consequences because um, radiation from Chernobyl accident and Fukushima accidents don't seem to actually affect us as badly as we think. And most of the time, actually it is the so-called placebo effect or basically the fear itself that really gets us and starts making us feel like we're actually getting sick. So it's, it's a very interesting psychological effect and not as much a physical effect, which of course is very, very interesting because most people would think that it's actually dangerous to be there, but it seems to be actually not as dangerous as we expected. And so it's actually the mental health impact that is very worrisome due to the uh, lack of this accurate information. And so most of the people that were affected um, by this disaster were going through things like traumatic disorder. They were actually uh, quite anxious, had a lot of depression and had a lot of different anxieties. And uh, most of them were actually mental issues and not health issues. And on the other hand, uh, because we're actually looking for certain uh, illnesses, we could uh, possibly even overdiagnose certain things like thyroid cancers because we're actually using more advanced uh, screening techniques as opposed to screening them normally in a normal population. So there's actually quite a chance that even the increased rate in thyroid cancers would actually be not as significant or not as large as we actually found it originally. But nevertheless, that's not to say that radiation is not dangerous because um, if you are exposed to high levels of radiation, uh, like those 31 people that actually died, you obviously would be in a lot of trouble. But um, what we found is that um, the immediate areas around those radiation fallout places are not as hazardous as we tend to think. 
which is actually a pretty great news because even today we have close to 500 um, or actually 435 nuclear reactors around the world with up to 500 uh, that will be built by the end of 2020. And so uh, since nuclear power is not going anywhere and since people are actually kind of scared of it, I think this is a pretty interesting and pretty informative study that actually shows us that uh, nuclear fallout and nuclear disasters are not not as dramatic and not as dangerous as sometimes media makes it out to be. Oh, and did you guys know that there's actually a very large steel and concrete sarcophagus built around the radioactive remains of the original reactor? And unfortunately, it was only built to last 30 years. And so sometime this or next year, uh, the Ukrainian government, along with uh, some other scientists, are actually planning to build the biggest movable structure ever built. And they're planning to bring it to Pripyat and then to place it over the old sarcophagus, covering the old debris and trying to protect the reactor from essentially falling apart and releasing more radiation. And this new building or new construction is supposed to last for at least 100 years. But even 100 years is unfortunately not going to be enough for uh, for us to actually get rid of the radiation inside because the half-life or the time it takes for um, all of this radioactive stuff to reduce by half or to, you know, basically half in number uh, would be something like 3,000 years. So it's going to take several thousand years for us to actually finally uh, get rid of all of the radioactive materials inside that reactor. But luckily for us, it seems that the effects of this radiation are not as dramatic as we thought, so maybe we shouldn't be as scared of it to begin with. And I actually wanted to talk a little bit more about the variety of animals that are thriving in this particular habitat. So um, if one day you actually get to visit this area, which apparently you can because there's a lot of these illegal tours everywhere that take you through um, various Chernobyl areas and uh, take you to the city as well. Um, you can actually discover quite a lot of a variety there. Uh, just recently they've discovered that apparently beavers have returned to this area. And beavers are obviously known for um, eating trees and falling trees and uh, creating dams and all that. But in Ukraine, uh, beavers are known to completely change the uh, landscape. And so if the beavers are essentially left alone to do their own thing, in uh, a, a few decades, this entire area, this entire forest will actually become like it was 100 years ago. It will become a bog. It'll, it's basically going to be a mixture of a forest and a swamp. And it's going to be a very interesting area to visit because not only is it going to be devoid of any kind of civilization signs, the only things that will remain standing will probably be the infamous Ferris wheel and a few buildings that will actually host uh, various animals, including wolves, badgers, and possibly even pigs. But interestingly, it is actually the beavers and not the humans that will most likely be responsible for changing this habitat in the next hundred or so years. And uh, what we know of Pripyat and Chernobyl today will be completely different by the time beavers are finished with it. Because in Ukraine, beavers are essentially like elephants in Africa. They usually completely change the look of the landscape. And so what all of this shows us is that uh, it is actually not the radiation that actually has a very negative impact on uh, nature and on essentially everything in that area, but it is the human population that settled in that area that actually caused a huge decline in numbers of animals, numbers of different species, uh, destruction of forests, and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, it is really the Chernobyl disaster that caused the sudden reemergence of all of these animals and the creation of of what can now be seen as one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, nature preserves in Europe. Which of course uh, causes a few problems with it as well. For example, poaching. Actually, poachers have returned to that area and there's quite a lot of new government initiatives to try to stop poachers from trying to kill these animals. But nevertheless, the amount of animals that have returned to Chernobyl, specifically wolves, um, have actually been described as absolutely staggering. As a matter of fact, the density of wolves in Chernobyl is now even much higher than in Yellowstone Park, which by itself is absolutely mind-boggling. And anyway, I think that's all I wanted to say in this video. I just kind of wanted to talk about the idea of a nuclear disaster and how it actually influences nature and people but also kind of explain to you that 
it really is not the radiation we should be afraid of, but our own effects on the nature and on forests, animals, and plants around us, because it is really humans that are causing most of the, the disasters in the area and not the radioactive fallout that we're so scared of. I also hope that I give you an idea of what uh, Chernobyl is like now, and this game is absolutely awesome at giving you this feeling and the atmosphere that you might experience if one day you decide to visit, because to me, this is kind of what it probably feels like, at least based on a combination of videos and photos that I've watched watched and a few tidbits I've read here and there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video where I'm going to try to teach you something else cool using video games. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click that subscribe button. And if you've enjoyed this video, click the like that is somewhere underneath the video. And if you have any friends that like to learn things using video games, share this video with them. And don't forget to comment. Tell me if you know something else about Chernobyl that I haven't mentioned in this video. And also let me know what you think about the game Stalker as well. Now, by the way, as I mentioned before, this game is actually absolutely free because it's a modification based on the original game. And you can download this game uh, for free and play it for free in the description below. Check it out. It's absolutely awesome. And it's going to give you a pretty good experience trying to survive this desolate world world of Chernobyl. And I know that I forgot to mention that the game Stalker is actually unofficially based on a really old Soviet movie called Stalker, but we'll talk about this some other time because it's a completely different story that will take a completely different video to make. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate all of your support. Game you later. Bye-bye. Stop or I'll open fire.